In my last video, I announced I would be holding a tournament. A Bibit tournament. The Bibits are the inhabitants of an evolution simulation that I've been working on for quite a while now. They can evolve their genes and behavior, which can vary wildly. For the least faint of art, it's even possible to engineer the brain of Bibits to create the behavior you want in your own species. I thought it could be interesting to let everyone submit their favorite Bibits, either evolved or engineered, and run a little tournament from the submissions to see if we can get interesting insights from the dynamics of the simulation. If these are the types of things that may be interesting to you, then welcome to the fascinating world of the Bibits. Before we begin, I'd like to give a quick shout out to Alex, a longtime collaborator who is assisting me in organizing and running this tournament. His help has been incredibly appreciated. Over the month long submission window, we received 86 submissions. This is amazing, but at one hour per match, this would mean more than 80 hours of simulation. So, as we announced, in order to thin out the number of contestants, we are first going to run a free-for-all round, spawning five of each contestant into a bigger world to see which 16 species are the most fit and will be selected for the actual competition. This also allows us to nicely cut the video in two parts. Since the tournament is going to take a while to run, I can work on making a video about the qualification round while the tournament is being run in the background. Yay for multitasking! We have a wide variety of submissions, from predators to herbivores, from finely engineered bibits to fully evolved ones, so I thought it would be fun to first look at a few of the most interesting ones. First, we have this submission called Father, described by its own creator as follows. And please don't judge me for my attenborough voice that you'll have to endure throughout the video. It's small, weak inefficient and dumb. Have mercy on my poor boy. My sad seven years old laptop struggled to evolve even this miserable creature. I wish him luck. Poor guy. <sighs> uh, off to a good start. We then have this species called the Immortal and a creator that seems a lot more confident, simply saying, He just lives forever. Well, we'll see about that. We also have this one, named Grey Goo, and are aptly described as follows. They are small, hungry, and reproduce like hell. Quite scary. On the highly engineered side, we have this species with a monstrous brain, simply called Einstein, crafted by the creator, which says, This bibit uses a complicated, compiled neural network, then evolve weights from there using Python and Hotohotkey. It would be nice to have more information about that, because I don't understand. It's also interesting to see the diversity in size across submissions. We have very large individuals, like this one called Big Chungus by Rat Nugget, which is supposed to be a K-selected species, investing heavily in a low number of youngs and taking very good care of them. We also have a few attempted predators, like Splode's Monster, that has been genetically engineered by its creator to chase other bibits and eliminate its competition, instead of competing with it over the same resources. Splodes also details that they made sure that the species is able to consume plants once it eliminated its competition. Honestly, it's pretty impressive to see the incredible amount of diversity across all submissions. After placing five individuals of each species across the map, the resulting chaotic patchwork of colors, sizes, and appearances is mesmerizing. But enough sightseeing. This is a competition after all, 
and it's time to start. Surprisingly, the simulation ran a lot smoothly than I first anticipated. With a little over 400 bibits, I thought my computer would literally melt. We are talking about simulating literal life forms after all. Some with brains big enough to be comparable to those of tardigrades. Everyone loves those, right? I should get extra point just for mentioning tardigrades. That's how science YouTube works. The first thing to notice is that the big bibits are initially dominating. As we announced, we are going to use each species' total energy to rank them. The total energy of a species is equivalent to their biomass and how much of the total environment they make out. It takes into account their size, their health, the content of their stomach, their energy reserves, and so on. So if we initially start with five members of each species, it just makes sense that the bigger bibbits have a higher starting total energy. I was worried that this would be unfair and was already trying to come up with ways to balance this, but it became pretty clear that this wouldn't be an issue. In this pretty crowded and scarce environment, the big bibbits quickly became targets for others. Small individuals started grabbing onto the bigger ones, leeching away at their health. With the right behavior, the bibbits are able to swallow the blood of other bibbits after all. And that's exactly what was going on. Additionally, the scarce environment made it so that the bigger bibbits had a harder time finding enough food to sustain their costly metabolisms. Having leeches constantly sucking their blood probably didn't help. The rapid decline and die-off of all the giants left a lot of meat everywhere, strongly benefiting all the contestants that relied on this food source. Meat being very energy dense made it so that all the meat eaters were able to grow and reproduce faster in this new meta. 10 minutes in, we already have 24 species that went extinct. We have Subrufa Aversor, by creator YBK, who is pretty active on the Vivid subreddit, presently high in the ranks and distinguishing itself. It has a pretty ginormous brain, which seems to be highly engineered. We also have Cyrilus Viator by creator Pixel, one of the last giants that is still around and that managed to stay at the top of the leaderboard for now. Its creator describes it as He's a large plant-eating creature. He's got small eyes and tends to travel alone and make large sweeps around the map. It's mesmerizing watching him Travel around. And actually, Einstein by Paranoid Coder, whom we've seen in the beginning, is doing pretty well this early. Interesting to note, this is the contestant with the largest brain, an incredible 41 hidden neurons and 145 connections. 20 minutes and 46 species are left. The true initial giants have all died off, with Subrufa Aversor being the biggest remaining species. Meat's energy share in the environment has been on the decline, and plants are rapidly becoming more available and reliable. The species name Big Eyes Leech is the last remaining non herbivore in the top 10. Einstein is also still comfortably around in 8th position. Things then remained pretty stable for a while, with the rankings staying relatively the same, but 40 minutes in, we now have a whopping 1143 bibits around across 27 remaining species. With this explosion in population, plants and meat are a lot less available, increasing the competition among species and the strain on my computer. Every individual born has to fight hard for their life in order to manage to find food before it starves to death. Bibbits are encouraged to pump out eggs as fast as possible, a phenomenon known as R selection, where individuals invest very little energy in their young and focuses on producing as many as possible so that at least one eventually survives, by pure chance. In this highly competitive environment, energy efficiency is also king, 
resulting in the decline of all the two big-brained bibbits like Einstein and Subrufa Aversa, that had a lot of neurons and connections. Bigger brains cost a lot more energy to sustain after all, so if other species can compete as well while using more optimized and regularized brain structures, they will eventually be outmatched. And finally, 15 minutes in, we are down to just 17 contestants, with 4 species being down to only 1 individual. The next one of them to die and go extinct will be eliminated and that will leave us with our 16 finalists. Aw damn. So this is it. After this qualification round, we now have 16 contestants ready to battle it out in the tournament. Only the meanest, luckiest and toughest of the bunch. Aside from the one we already know, I don't want to give out the actual final rankings, but I figured that before finishing this video, I'll go through all the finalists quickly, and in no specific order, to allow you all to make your own predictions of who the winner will be. A poll will also be available on Twitter and YouTube. I'll link to both in the comments so you can compare your vote with everyone else. You'll see that this unforgiving environment ended up selecting for very similar adaptations. Many contestants will share behaviors and adaptations with others, but I think every single one of them still have something unique and interesting that might allow them to win. So first of all, we have Apophis Apocalypsis, a small herbivore and hybrid being partially engineered and partially evolved, described by its creator as a special species of bibbits engineered to thrive in tournament conditions the result of 580 generations of selection, 830 lines of research and testing noted in a document and hundreds of hours of simulation. If someone else's submission wins, they deserve it. I love some good sportsmanship when I see it. If you want to share your documentation and experimentations with everyone else, I'm sure that many would be interested. Apophis likes to grab onto food, which then stimulates its herding neuron when it manages to do so. This, in terms, leads them to spread relatively evenly and share the space and resources amongst themselves. Next, we have this simply named Beyblade, which I hope will not cause any lawsuits. According to the creator, they are 99% naturally evolved. I can't say 100% because I tried my hand at influencing their evolution with a gene editor a couple of times, although I utterly failed and they instantly unevolved my traits, lol. It's called Beyblade because of how they like to latch onto a pellet or each other and spin until it's eaten or they die. I feel you here. Editing brains can be a demoralizing endeavor. Being a god is not an easy task. Notably, seeing blue bibbits will cause them to strongly and negatively stimulate their herding neuron, which will make them tend to avoid other blue bibbits. Interesting. As our third contestant, we now have Bibby. Its creator had to say, there isn't anything special about my bibbit. I just set random bibbit spawns and let it run until about generation 3000s. First of all, wow, harsh. I'm sure there's a lot of special things about your bibbit. It evolved an unstimulated Gaussian neuron as a source of constant activation, instead of using the actual constant neuron. That's something, I guess. Its behavior otherwise is interesting. It grabs onto pellets and avoids others when it has a lot of energy stored. Its growth curve is also pretty special, growing extremely fast in the beginning and tapering off as it grows, allowing them to reach maturity very quickly and not waste as much energy continuing to grow afterward. Never underestimate 3000 generations of evolution. Next we have Darwin's disasters. What a name. <laughs> A cute small cyclops described as 
evolved without human interference, I just changed the world settings a couple of times. I'm pretty sure that changing the rules and parameters of a universe counts as interference, but I let this one slide as your method clearly worked. Darwin's disasters <sighs> has a very narrow field of view and moves around by doing a kind of alternating scanning motion as long as it doesn't see plants. It seems to really want to grab onto stuff, anything, as it only grows when holding onto something. Seeing other bibits also makes it want to shy away from others by negatively stimulating the herding neuron, which seems like a very common and useful trait to have in this environment. Continuing, we have Fodder. Hey, I remember you. This was the submission where the creator kept dunking on its bibit the whole time. Small, weak, inefficient, dumb, miserable creature, poor guy. Seems like your poor Bibbit didn't do too bad. It is pretty standard, although this one is not afraid of others. One interesting thing, however, is that it will violently throw away everything it holds as soon as it holds more than one item. One pellet. Perfectly fine. Two pellets. What the hell? As our sixth contestant, Luscus Ixibridus. I've been working on this Bibbit for the tournament all month. It's quite smart, but its main advantage is the population growth. They multiply so fast that after a few minutes they are too numerous for my computer to handle. I hope this is the key to winning. Well, seems like you were on the right track. Their brain is indeed cool and pretty complex. The faster they go, the more they want to grab things. And as soon as they do so, they completely stop any movements, increase their digestion, and start growing. Next, this species called Magnustera. A little yellow-colored bibbit that can reproduce really fast and is always growing. When it grabs something, it slows down or even tries to pull it away from others. Indeed, they start developed already and grow very quickly to maturity, in as little as 100 seconds, which is very fast. It also holds tighter and tighter as it ages, making it so that when old, it will never let go of what it holds. Onward, my Kentes Okuri, by a creator who simply says, The fittest bibbit I was able to grow with the tournament settings. Concise and to the point, I like it. Their brain is not too special, but they do seem to like doing a sort of funny dance when seeing each other. This is only triggered by the red pigment in the bibbits around them, which they do possess in some quantity to produce that deep dark green color. For our ninth finalist, we have Minima Unorum. The Minima Unorum are an aggressive, invasive species that specializes in seeking and hoarding food. They use little energy to move and reproduce fast, so they have a tendency to outcompete larger species for resources. I think it's also the first contestants that I see having an actual interest for meat, as they actively seek it in addition to plants. Next, this one called Multido Insectum. The only thing we know about his submission is that this bibbit was the result of a 11 hex and 1 x speed simulation using tournament settings. Doesn't tell us a lot. Well, it grabs foods and only grows when it has food in its mouth. This one will always move forward and never stop moving. It also has absolutely no connection to the herding node, which makes it kind of special compared to other contestants. As our 11th participant, we have Nubby Competitor. These guys are all natural, with no editing done at any point. They ran continuously for over a thousand sim hours, starting on the day the tournament was announced. High crowding and the lack of food became the main selective pressure that would give rise to the newbie. They have also evolved an interesting brain structure that make it so that they dynamically control their growth entirely through their neural network quite interesting. Coming up, Obscuris Irrelevantis. Just a simple evolved bibbit. 
It's probably not anything notable by general standards, so feel free to leave it out if there's not enough space. Why does every single thing from the species name, the creator's name and the description oozes defeatism? Dude, you made it in the top 16. Stop selling yourself short. Next, a species called Parva Fragrum. This contestant was initially designed to be small, fast, and produce many offsprings. After this initial sketch, a simulation was run for about 200 hours, resulting in this submission. Their genes make it so that they will always lay an egg as soon as they have enough energy to afford it. Their babies are also born at a pretty high maturity, so laying their egg is very costly for them, meaning that they are always either starving or saving energy to lay an egg as fast as possible. 14th in the list, Parvam Cerulum. Small cyan boy with red eyes runs around grabbing pellets and tries to not get too close to other babbits through stimulating its herding neuron. It also grows faster when it's full, and it seems to rapidly hold and let go of stuff at some point, but I can't really identify why, just by looking at their brain. Fifteenth, this one called Ramsey Jr. An evolved bibbit, admittedly very small and defenseless as it evolved with no prey or invaders, but is a quick reproducer. Purely a herbivore, and to save energy, has developed the behavior to slow down or stop moving once it has found a plant pellet. Indeed, a very small guy. The way the creator describes it is pretty funny, as it is in fact the largest of the finalists. It even ends up growing enough that it even changes resolution at some point. Incredible. And finally, the final contestant, Skippy Grabby. He skips and he grabs. What's not to love? Truly beautiful words. I don't really know what skip means in this context, but cool. They are relatively slow compared to most other contestants, but it's not too bad. They also have a pretty aggressive growth profile that forces them to constantly be on the lookout for food in order to not starve. So yeah, that's the whole roster. A pretty similar crowd in general, but interesting variations in terms of specific genetic makeup and brain topology. It's funny to see that this setup strongly selected for very small and efficient individuals, while the Tree Island 100 simulation I run, make sure to watch that if you haven't, encouraged very big and whale-like creatures. Like always with life, wildly different things can be selected for in different environments. Now make sure to go vote for your favorite contestant, and while at it, why not throw in a like on this video, if you liked it for real. I'll now be working on the resulting tournament with Alex, so if you don't want to miss that out, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I never thought this would be possible, but it looks like reaching 100k might just not be a dream anymore thanks to your collective help. I want to also give a special thanks to all my patrons that are supporting the project and allowing me to focus on it full time. You are all incredible and I am infinitely grateful. So like always, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time.